Airplane engine failures are very rare. Despite that I talk about them almost every week, the statistic likelihood of a pilot experiencing an engine failure during his career is less than 20%. Now imagine how the pilots of British Airways Flight 9 must have felt when all four engines of their Boeing 747 failed within minutes. Today we are going to find out what happened on that fateful night and how it changed aviation knowledge for the better. If you liked the video, please subscribe for weekly aviation videos. It helps me out a lot. Welcome to airspace. On June 24th, 1982, the British Airways Flight 9 was en route from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia to Perth, Australia. It was night time and the men on the flight deck, Captain Eric Moody, First Officer Roger Greaves and Flight Engineer Barry Townley Freeman had just had their dinner when the captain decided to take a break and visit the restroom. When he found the lavatory closest to the cockpit occupied, he decided to head for the first class. There he suddenly noticed that smoke was present in the cabin. Nothing too unusual at the time, since smoking on board was still permitted. But to him, this smell had something acrid, burning and electrical to it, so he decided to look around. Quickly, he spotted clouds of smoke billowing out from the ventilation slots. In alarm, he returned to the cockpit. The three men were confronted with what they described as the most stunning display of St. Elmo's fire on the cockpit windows. This phenomenon usually occurs close to thunderstorms. It is static electricity discharging inside the metallized layers of the heated airplane windshields. The captain thought this was odd since he knew that they would be flying through clear air and good weather with no thunderstorms around for hundreds of miles. The situation became even more bizarre as the first officer pointed out of the side windows and to the engines and remarked to the captain that they were glowing. And indeed, the engine seemed to be illuminated by a bluish glow from within that gave the engine an eerie look. With the fan blades moving, it created a stroboscopic effect that looked like the fan blades were moving backwards, like car wheels in some movies. This was nothing either of the men had ever seen or even heard of. In the meantime, the display in the windscreen changed from lightning bolts to something the captain later described to have looked like tracer bullets hitting the aircraft. While the captain was still trying to wrap his head around what was happening at the time, the flight engineer called out that engine number 4, the outboard right engine, had failed. Less than a minute later, engine 2, that is the inboard left engine, flamed out as well, and just seconds later and almost simultaneously, the two remaining engines stopped as well. The 747 was now gliding through the night silently and glowing in blue. The captain handed control to his first officer, who put out a mayday call and set the autopilot up so the plane would descend slowly, while maintaining enough speed. He then tried to figure out what was happening, thinking to himself, four engines do not fail. Checklists were run, but to no avail. Soon the crew began trying to relight the engines, but this too failed multiple times. When the plane descended through 26,000 feet, the cabin pressure warning came on. Since the engines were no longer running, no pressurized air from them was available for cabin pressurization and the pressure inside the plane quickly started to diminish. In the cabin, the yellow oxygen masks dropped down and the flight crew too donned their oxygen masks. But when Captain Eric Moody removed his mask from the stowage box, he held it in his hands in pieces with the oxygen hose detached. Without oxygen for himself, he had to decide quickly whether to maintain the glide or start an emergency descent at high speed in order to reach an altitude where he too could breathe. He opted for the emergency descent. While the plane was descending at high speed, he realized that he would maintain consciousness, but also that the first officer and his speed displays were different. How could this be? Four engines failing and unreliable airspeed readings, two seemingly separate and in themselves very rare occurrences. During the descent, he also made an announcement to the passengers in a very British manner. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We have a small problem, all four engines have stopped. We are doing our damnedest to get them going again. I trust you are not in too much distress. At that point, he realized that this had probably been the greatest understatement ever, as now they had the high Indonesian terrain in front of them and the engines were still not turning. He mentally prepared to ditch the airplane into the Indian Ocean. While he was planning on how to execute this, tears came from the first officer and the flight engineer as they finally managed to fire up engine number four which enabled them to lower the rate of descent. Soon after, the other three engines started as well and the crew again had full power. They used it in the nick of time to climb over the terrain ahead of them 
and requests to divert to Jakarta, Indonesia, since they suspected the engines were severely damaged. Shortly after the crew had resumed their climb, the St. Elmo's fire started again and engine 2 started searching and emitting loud bangs. The crew shut it down for good and decided to not climb any further, since somehow the strange lights and engine failures seemed to correlate. When approaching Jakarta, the crew was informed that the vertical guidance part of the instrument landing system was out of service and that they would have to fly using lateral guidance only. Usually, this type of approach requires a visibility that is not too bad. When the crew turned onto the final approach path, they found it very odd that the runway lights seemed to disappear just as they pointed their nose toward the runway. In that moment, they realized that the windows were almost completely opaque, which made the approach difficult and the landing uncertain. Captain Moody found a small strip near the edge of the window that was not opaque and managed to land the massive 747 safely. When the crew left their plane, they could almost not believe their eyes. The entire plane looked as if it had been sandblasted, paint was missing from the wings and engines and the windshields were looking like frosted glass. What had happened on that night? Let's go back to the moment Captain Moody smelled smoke and returned to the flight deck in a hurry just to see a stunning display of electric discharge. At that moment, the aircraft had entered the volcanic ash cloud emitted by Mount Galungung, a volcano close to Jakarta. This volcano had only just erupted and its ash cloud had not yet been visible on weather charts when the crew of British Airways 9 departed Kuala Lumpur. As the plane flew through the cloud, Microscopically small, sharp and very abrasive particles peppered the aircraft and the engines. These hits resulted in static discharges, explaining the eerie bluish glow enveloping the engines and windscreens. They stripped paint from the plane and started to affect the engines as well. Turbine blades were sanded and changed in shape slightly, leading to disruptions in airflow. But most notably, the particles melted in the combustion chamber of the engines where they were turned into a glass-like sludge that clung to the engine parts and severely disrupted airflow. As the plane descended, it picked up more and more ash particles, clogging up the pitot tubes that measure airspeed. Descending through about 15,000 feet, the plane left the ash cloud. In the meantime, the engines had cooled down and the sludge inside them cracked away, making them once again able to be restarted. Unfortunately, I was unable to find good pictures of the plane as it was on ground. But just look at the engine here, note all the dust present in the lower part of the picture. In 1989, a crew of a KLM 747 encountered the same phenomenon and almost the same sequence of events thereafter with a quadruple engine failure. They too were able to restart the engines and land the plane. These events led to a more cautious approach to volcanic ash in aviation, as could be seen in 2010 when the Icelandic volcano Eyjaf, Eyjaf, Jatla, Jökull sorry to the Icelandic friends, the volcano that shall not be named erupted and halted almost all air travel in Europe. New procedures were instated and now there's a volcanic ash encounter checklist for almost every airliner out there, which in essence reads, turn back as fast as you can, reduce thrust to safety engines and use the oxygen masks if required. After the event, the crew and passengers of British Airways 9 founded the Galungon Gliding Club to stay in touch. Two passengers that were seated in rows in front of each other also got married in 1993 and the 747 was repaired and used until it was scrapped in 2004. Thank you very much for watching. Next week we are going to take a look at the crash of the Concorde back in 2000. If you liked the video, please subscribe if you think I earned it. See you in the next one.